Okay, what I want to do is I actually want to show you how to actually uh, bring the application in that I've, I've sent you into Flash Builder Burrito. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring up Flash Builder Burrito over here. So I, I'm going to show you the application that we're going to be working with and then I'm going to actually uh, show you how to bring it into your Flash Builder. So let me just say real quick, I did not write this application. This application was written by, I guess, Anja uh, Kokenbecker. And he did this in 2010. It was a Flex 3 application, not a Flex 4. And so I went along and took this application. I, I, I built it or turned it into a Flex 4 application. I added some centering and I changed this UI uh, V group to an H group. And uh, so it looks a little, just a little bit different, but it's still the same application. Just now that it runs in Flex 4, which is what you want. And so it's a very simple application. I call it my first uh, Mate 4 uh, project. And I, when I click on that, and then I'm going to run it. And uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, mechanism here just to do an extremely simple thing. And you're going to, why would you want to do all this coding for such a simple thing? And all you do is put in Mike, for example, whatever you want to put in that uh, box right there. And it's going to take that name and it's going to transfer it to an alert box. Hey, you have clicked the button and your text was Mike. Now, there's a lot of framework to make that happen. Go, oh my God, why would you do all that? But you, you, you wouldn't for a small program like this. But what it is is when you're building enterprise prize programs or large programs, you need all this framework or you're, eventually you'll crash somewhere down the line. So we'll show you how to do this with simple examples and we'll build on what we learned for your, for your larger enterprise examples. Okay? So let me get out of that, and I'm back in uh, Flex, or Flash Builder now. And what I want to do is take the full file that I gave you. So I sent you a file, and that file was an FXG file. And so let me show you that real quick. Yeah, you should have this file right here. Now, it has everything you need in it. So what Flash Builder has done, which is wonderful, in the olden days, it was somewhat difficult to get a Flash Builder project into Flex or Flash, Flash Builder. And so uh, you had a zip, and you un and you unarchived it and it always didn't work but now you can just package everything into an FXG file has everything in it and just import the FXG file it's extremely simple to do go to file as it says import flash builder project or FXG file just click import navigate to the file that you're bringing in I keep saying FXG I meant to say FXP okay and click on that and then you just do an open and that will import that into your uh, application now I'm not going to do it because I've already done it and when you when you do that you should get a folder that says my first Mate Flex 4 project go ahead and do that and see if that happens for you okay so you know this is a very simple application but it does uh, a lot but it has a lot of framework associated with it and that framework is in the com folder uh, Angelitics and in the Angelitics, you can see a business folder, a events folder, a maths folder, a UI folder, and a VOS, which stands for value objects. Okay. Now, the view, v, UI is basically, that's the user interface. That's what you see. It's a flex component. We're going to teach you how to build flex components. So if I click on that, I get this, uh, basically, it is written in what's called MXML. And that sets up the structure of the flex component. And you can actually also see a little bit of action scripting going on here as well. Here's my action scripting right there. So if I go to the design view, that's the component I built. It takes a while. It's still coming. And there's the component. And you saw that earlier. So, uh, But there's a few other uh, important folders here. And one is called an events folder called test event. I'm going to click on that. Can you see that test event.as? Click on that right there. And you can see this is a very simple class. And I've created a constant here, which is a string that it says keeps track of what I'm doing. It is like an event bubbler. The wonderful thing about uh, Mate is that it's built on the natural events of Flash Builder or Flex. And so what you want to do is in these natural event flow is set the events to true right here. And when you do that everything will bubble up into what's called an event map where it captures that event. And so the string allows you to direct where that event's going to be captured. That's what it does for you. All right, and so you'll be building lots of uh, event strings uh, based upon whatever you want to do with Mate. All right, and so which brings us to the next thing, which is the event map, and the event map basically captures the event that comes in. So you can, so you can see if I scroll down here, here's that test get event right here, 
and it's going to grab that event and it's going to execute something. And in this case, it's going to execute a method invoker. And that method invoker is basically going to pass whatever string I put into that little text box to my alert box. And that's done here in the business logic. So if I click on there, do all that stuff, here it is. And you can see a little string statement right here. You have clicked on a little smiley face, right? And let me scroll over a little bit. The argument is passed. There it is. So what I've successfully done here is actually decoupled everything and put it into its own little places. So if I have to change something, it's not all spaghetti coded together. All the uh, events are going to be basically changed here in the event map. Now what's cool about that is the event map doesn't know anything about the uh, event code and the event code doesn't know anything about the event map. It's all decoupled and the UI is separate itself. So this is, I know you're new to this, but once you've done enough cases, it starts making sense just by association. You've seen it enough? Oh, I, I know how that works. And so we're going to be doing a lot of simple examples, but we're going to be building your system up pretty rapidly because you, you have a simple system, and it can be interfaced to, and uh, I'm fairly experienced in this area, and I've worked with MVC for a lot. And I've worked with MVC a lot. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to watch uh, those videos, okay, go through the material, and go through this example and see if you can understand this example. So when you watch that video I gave you, just make sure you, you work through this example and just make sure you can understand what's going on with all these with this folder structure.